Okay, here we're going to prove that the limit as x approaches 4 of 2x plus 3 equals 11 using the precise definition of a limit. So again, we said that definition, we have to show that if the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then we have that f of x minus l will be less than epsilon. If we can justify um, this statement, then we will have proven this limit. So again, to remind you, in this case, my a value, so my a value is 4. The 2x plus 3, that's my function, f of x. And the number that we're claiming to be the limit, that is uh, 11. That's our L value. So one thing you have to sort of come up typically is you have to figure out some relationship between uh, epsilon and delta that's going to work. So again, the linear one, it's going to be, we're going to kind of come up with, with a, um, you know, sort of an educated guess, if you want to call it that, about, you know, a delta that will work. So again, this is the idea. Somebody says, here's epsilon, you've got to find a delta. So I'm going to find a, a, a delta that's going to be related to this number. So you tell me the number epsilon, I'm going to give you some formula for delta that will always work for that particular epsilon that you give me. So again, we have to show in this specific exa example that if the absolute value of x minus a, which is 4, if that's less than delta, then we have that f of x, which is 2x plus 3, minus l, which is going to be 11, we have to show that that's going to, in fact, be less than epsilon. Okay, so for these linear ones, the idea is you basically kind of play with uh, this, this part involving f of x and the limit. So, so let's notice. So we're going to do a little arithmetic. So we've got 2x plus 3 minus 11 the absolute value of that less than epsilon. Well, that's going to give us 2x, well, 2x plus 3 minus 11, that's 2x minus 8. Okay, we can just simplify that, you know, that, that expression in those parentheses. Well, the 2, I could factor that inside the absolute value. I could factor that out and have 2 multiplied by x minus 4, less than epsilon. Well, I can factor the 2 out. I can take the absolute value of it, which is still just going to be 2. And now I can divide both sides of this expression by 2 and have the absolute value of x minus 4 less than epsilon over 2. And you could basically just reverse these steps and go right back up, and that's actually what I'm going to do. Okay, but uh, we've kind of come up with a relationship. So this suggests, it says, maybe we should let... You know, so you tell me what epsilon, you know, you give me the epsilon, I think, well, how would I get the delta? It says a nice mechanical formula would be just simply to let uh, delta equal epsilon over 2. Actually, epsilon over 3 would work, epsilon over 4 would work, epsilon over 5 would work, because those would all even put you in a, in a smaller interval. But um, this, this uh, uh, relationship between delta and epsilon will work. So... Okay, so now I'm going to justify this stuff. And again, I'm just going to reverse the steps, but that's all we have to do. So, so notice if the absolute value of x minus a, which is 4, if that's less than delta, well, in this case, we would have the absolute value of x minus 4. That would be less than epsilon over 2, because, well, delta equals epsilon over 2. Well, what can we conclude from that? So eventually I want to reach the statement that says that, uh, that eventually I want to get to the, this statement, that the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 11, that would be less than epsilon. If that follows from this statement, then I've proven the limit. Well, again, I'm just going to basically reverse my steps. I can multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so that would certainly be true. I can put the 2 inside. Okay, so that's still algebraically correct. I can distribute. That's still correct. I can break up negative 8 if I wanted to. I could rewrite that. Let me go over here so I'm not wasting more paper. I could rewrite that as 2x plus 3 minus 11, right? 
positive 3 minus 11, that's still just negative 8. That statement would still be true. Well, again, notice that this is my function f of x minus, there's my L value. I've now got that statement that I wanted. I've got that f of x minus L is, in fact, less than epsilon. So I have logically uh, uh, started from this relationship. And I've shown that if, well, x minus a is less than delta, then yeah, in fact, f of x minus l is less than epsilon, which means I have proven that limit using the definition. So in another video, we'll do a quadratic one. That's going to take a little more work. It's not going to be, it's not going to feel exactly like you're sort of reversing these steps like we just did. This one will take a little more, a little more deducing, but uh, um, we'll go through that one as well. So again, one last remark, you know, I know um, there's limit laws and all this stuff, but the notion of a limit, this is what ties calculus together. I mean, this is one of the, the, the big ideas that everything rests on. So this is why, you know, okay, yeah, there's these formulas, but understanding the definition and understanding the stuff, this is, this is um, the important part of mathematics, okay? So, um, so again, you know, I, I know it might feel like overkill, but, um, you know, at some point math gets really rigorous, and this is the kind of the, the, you know, the process that you have to go through. So this is why people start introducing this stuff now in a calculus class. You're getting a little more sophisticated, you're getting into more advanced topics, and uh, you know, they're trying to introduce you to this more, these more rigorous techniques, um, you know, just a little bit at a time. So anyways, okay, sorry for my um, philosophizing there. In another video, we'll prove this limit as well.